In today's episode, I will be putting on my coaching hat, sharing some strategies with you that will help you properly measure success in your life. You're listening to The Joshua Mentality. Hello and welcome back to another episode of The Joshua Mentality. Yes, this is week, you guessed it, this is week 37. For those of you who have been playing along, you know we've been counting this thing down pretty much since it started. And yes, we are already at number 37. Can you believe it? Each week I cannot. So this week will be no different, all right? But yeah, we're almost there. We're approaching that halfway point very quickly, y'all. So uh, make sure you you are locked in and and you're still focused. I'm going to make sure you see this this year through completely because I'm going to remind you every week you tune in what week it is, all right? Also, if you're tuning in for the first time, let, allow me to introduce myself. I am Joshua, and this podcast is really all about uh, me encouraging you to live out your life purpose. Uh, this is this podcast, this season is called The Mentality of Success, and success is really all about you know fully engaging all that your life was intended for, or as much as you can, really. You know, maybe we won't get to all of it, but I'm going to push you to get to as much of it as you can. So each week we pick some topics that are kind of in that realm. Um, Sometimes we go a little bit off the grid, but most of the time we talk about just living out your life purpose and and what are you here for and how you can live that out. I think that's a great segue for this week because this week we're actually going to be getting into some specific strategies around this topic and measuring success. Uh, If For those of you who also don't know, In my professional career, I am a coach and strategist. So I spend a lot of my time, you know, coaching, uh, usually around various subjects. I won't get into that. But this episode, versus it just being strictly conversational, I'm actually going to put on my coaching hat today. And I, I got some questions for you. I came across this awesome article online as I was kind of show prepping. And I thought, man, there's no reason to try to reinvent this wheel um, because we try to talk about the same subjects just in a different way sometimes so that it would hit or, or stick. Sometimes, you know, just hearing a message differently in your you know cognitive brain will attach better than when you heard it, you know, four, five, six conversations or, or topics ago. So there's this great article um, that was written um, by a man named Mike Fishbeam. I hope I'm saying that last name correct. But the article is really about how to measure success. And I think this is one of those topics where we talk a lot about living out your life purpose. And one of the greatest elements of or indicators of doing that is reaching success in your life. However, the challenge is many people define that differently. So in this episode, I'm going to share just five important strategies uh, that you can use to properly measure success in your life. But first, I got a question for you as we jump into this. My question, and I don't, what I, and before I, I ask this question, here's what I'll say. I want you to actually answer this question. Wherever you are right now, if you're driving in your car, if you're you know walking down the sidewalk, wherever you are, as you listen to this, and this question, I really want you to answer it. In fact, I think I'm going to do the whole awkward silence thing, which is probably never (laughs) recommended on a podcast, but I want to give you the space to really answer this question. So are you ready? Here's the question. I want to know on a scale of one to five, how successful would you rate yourself currently? Again, on a scale of one to five, How successful would you rate yourself currently? Think about it as I insert this awkward silence. One to five. Don't overthink it. Don't pick the number of where you wish you were because it's just you. It's just you and me. In fact, it's just you because I have no idea what number you're picking. So (laughs) pick pick the one that's honest. One to five, how successful would you rate yourself 
currently. Here's another question. When you think about success, I want to know what indicators immediately come to mind. In other words, that could be indicators, could be a job, a title, it could be happiness. Those are some of the common indicators. But what indicators come to mind when you think about success for your life? What are those, what are those things that make you feel like, hey, I'm successful because this, because this, what are those things? I want you to get them in the front of your mind. And the reason why I ask these questions as we get into this conversation is because these questions are very important because they have a, a direct correlation with your mentality. We talk this, this whole season is about the mentality of success. These questions are pivotal when it comes to your outlook of success for your life. And, and this outlook will inform how you spend that time currency we talked about a few episodes ago. Remember, I told you time is the number one currency, not money, time. And so your outlook on success has the greatest indication of how you will spend your time. And that's why I want to take you through these five strategies today, because I want you to have kind of a clear measuring system of how you measure success for your life. That way you can also do a better job of managing the time that you invest towards that clarity in success. I know I said a lot there. Hope I didn't lose anyone, but let's go ahead. Let's just jump into these, these um, strategies and then maybe it'll make more sense by the time we get to the end. All right. So again, this is from Mike Fishbean. This is the six strategies that help define success. I thought this was pretty cool. And anytime I come across something of value, I want to share it with you because if it, if it helps me, I, I know, or I believe at least, it will help you as well. All right, so the first one is when it comes to measuring success or how you can properly measure success for your life, the first strategy is to discover your values. That's the first strategy. You have to discover your values. And I like, there's a few excerpts in here I'm going to read, but one of them came from a, a guy named Peter Drucker. And I love this excerpt because it says, this uh, quote from Peter says, there is nothing quite so useless as doing with great efficiency something that should not be done at all. Again, there's, there's nothing quite so useless. I love that word, useless. A friend of mine, we use that word a lot. Uh, probably not in, in the kindest of ways, but <laughs> it's all with love. But useless. Nothing is, is, is as useless as doing with great efficiency something that should not be done at all. So here's what I'll ask you. I told you my coaching hat, hat's on today, so expect a lot of questions. I want to know rapid fire. What are your top five values? Rapid fire. What are your top five values? Say them out loud right now. For many of you, you were either able to get through all of them or you kind of got stuck after the common ones of family, um, integrity. Uh, I don't know. What are the, some other common ones? You know. So that, that leads to the second and probably more important question. Are the values that you just stated or thought about, are they truly yours? And the best way to determine that is, does your actions align with the values you just mentioned? How, one great way to look at that is how you spend those top three currencies we talked about two episodes ago. Family can't be a value if that's the least place you spend your most important currency. And I, I'm not coming for anybody today, but I'm telling you, this is why we do this kind of exercise because in our mind, we'll say values are, are, are our values are one way, but then if we really analyze and take the moment to really, you know, practice self-awareness 
and bring things up to our, our conscious, then we'll realize, you know, that's really not a value because my actions don't, don't serve as a witness to that value. And so here's another way we'll, I'll, I'll put this. When we go back to that quote, there's, there's, there is nothing quite so useless as doing with great efficiency, something that should not be done at all. That's referring to the value system. So to get really efficient at doing something that's not even a part of your value makeup is very useless. I'll give you the perfect example. And I've told, I've, I think I've mentioned this on here before, but I'll go back to that example of me uh, when I was you know, 18, 19 year old version of myself and just in my attire, how I dressed. Now, some of you may say, well, we all kind of dressed weird or funky when we were you know, younger, but specific, specifically for me, I remember dressing in pants that were way larger than, than my waist size, shirts that were way larger than my torso. And it was because they were connected to a value system a value system of wanting to feel um, accepted or a value system of wanting to, you know, fit in, wanting to carry a certain persona. And I told you all this story a while ago about my friend Victor when he asked me, hey, why do you dress like that? And for the first time, it was like somebody snapped me back into reality. For the first time in my entire, you know, kind of adolescence through teenage years, the first time somebody challenged me on what my values really are and didn't do it aggressively, kind of did it hap- haphazardly or nonchalant. But it made me think, like, why do I dress this way? Is this, does this align with my values? And what I discovered very quickly was the values that I claimed. To, if you asked me what was my top five values, none of them would have aligned with me walking around with my pants hanging below my butt or you know, speaking or acting in ways that I was, that have nothing to do with how I was raised. They would have nothing to do with the values I would tell you were my top five values, which means I was becoming very efficient at perfecting useless things. Useless being those values that were not mine. So that's one way to measure success. Discover your own values. Make sure that you choose for yourself what your values are. Because if you don't choose for yourself, you'll end up flowing with the current of the culture around you, which may or may not be fulfilling for you. You have to decide that. But I was definitely one that was flowing with the culture around me before I realized this is not, this is not aligned with my values. So I'm, I, I spent a little bit too much time on that one. I want to move on. The next strategy and how you can properly measure success for your life is number two. And we've talked about this one quite a bit. Comparing yourself only to yourself. That's a great way to measure success in your life. Compare yourself only to you. Nobody else. I I think one of the the things in the article said, if Billy uh, has a lot of money, but money isn't valuable to you, then don't worry about Billy. Don't worry about Billy, y'all. Only compare yourself to yourself. Don't measure yourself by what you've accomplished, but rather by what you should have accomplished with your abilities. That's a John Wooden quote. And what that simply means is that your, I I use this word a lot, I'm going to use it again, reference point should be your potential, your abilities, your strengths, your dreams. How intentional you are about your leadership, your growth. That is the measuring stick. And that's how you become the very best that you are capable of being. And that's by comparing yourself only to yourself. And I know that's a hard thing to do in our, you know, social media driven world where we can see everything everybody's up to. It becomes one of the hardest things to not allow that to get into our subconscious mind where we do uh, what I think has now actually been, de- uh, it's actually been a term- terminology created for this. It's called social comparison bias. We got, we got terms for everything now, but that's one that's used for how we, we create these cognitive biases by just looking at and making judgments based off of what we're seeing other influencers do or people in our, our mind or around us that we've allowed to become influencers. 
So stop all that. Stop comparing yourself. You are, as I've told you before, you're beautifully and wonderfully made, young man. Old man and man in the middle, whoever you are. You're valuable. So you don't need to compare yourself to anybody else. Every day I get up, it's funny, I'll tell this story and I'll move on to the next strategy. Just last night, I was, or this morning rather, I woke up kind of very suddenly. And it was because I was having this weird dream of like me writing a book. And I started seeing all these like, they didn't really, they weren't really human figures, but they were like symbol, symbolized as humans. And it was a, it was a, an apparent need. It was a need for the, the book that I had written in that dream. And I woke up saying to myself, I, I think I almost said it out loud. Like, like I need to get this out. I need to get this out. And I'm, I'm, I'm using that because that would mean that whatever thing I want to write or put together, it's not because I want to be like this other person who sold a bunch of books, but the purpose and the value is because it's the reference point of what's in me, what I believe I am capable and I'm supposed to do. And I would hope that the same thing happens for you in your life. All right. So that's number two. Compare yourself only to yourself. Number three, the third strategy is measure what's hard to measure. And I'll be quick on this one, but I will be concise and direct. Measure what's hard to measure. Things like money, material, those things are easy to measure. You can just go to your bank account. You can go look at a statement. You can pull out all your fancy things, electronics and shoes and all this stuff. That stuff is easy to measure. Measure what's hard to measure. There is no bank account you can go look at to see how much character you've stored up. How much integrity we've built up. How honest we are. How patient, how gentle, how kind. How, how much self-control we have. Those things are hard to measure. Because number one, really only you know where you're at in those areas. And so you could be dormant in those areas and nobody would ever know until you got to a, a tough or adverse situation. And that's what reveals who we really are. So don't waste your time, you know, trying to put on that mask. Measure what's hard to measure now. Put that into your, you know, criteria of, of how you measure success. All right. That's strategy number three. Measure what's hard to measure. I want to get you all out of here on time, so I'm going to move on to the next one. Strategy number four. Measure results over the long term. And I love this one because this one's hard. It's been This has probably been one of the hardest ones for me because when I start something, I kind of want to see results in the, in the near future. Or even if I don't see results, it's just it becomes discouraging if I don't see any response. And I think I spoke about that on IG this week about not allowing small responses to uh, discourage big purpose. And that's what this strategy is about. And, and I love what the author uses. He uses an example from the founder of Instacart. And Instacart has already been kind of determined as one of the largest or most you know, lucrative growing startups in the world. Yet what a lot of people don't know is that Instacart failed or, or the 20 startups before Instacart failed before the founder finally hit it with Instacart. So imagine if that person had the same kind of outlook I just described for myself and gave up after the first 10, which, you know, some of you would say, I can understand that if you gave up after the first 10. But here's, the, here's why it's important to make sure you are measuring properly and not measuring by the short term, but measuring results over the long term. Don't just measure immediate tangible results to define success. Consider what you've learned from those failures and how it would help you achieve success in the future. And here's why, because opportunities oftentimes or more times than not, they take time to deliver results. They take time to deliver results and they take active and consistent showing up every day. Showing up every day is what it takes oftentimes to get that profitable growth in your life in more ways than one. So measure results over the long term. All right. 
We're up at the last one here and I'm gonna get you all out of here. The last strategy when it comes to measuring success for your life, properly measuring success for your life is to measure outcomes, not volume. Measure outcomes, not volume. What do I mean by that? Well, imagine, imagine that, let's say you were, re, let's say, let's say that person that is, I probably shouldn't say that person, but if you've ever met someone that was really busy, like they were just really, really busy all the time, but you never really saw any outcomes, no shade to that person. But what that is a perfect example of is when we are measuring the wrong thing, when we're measuring the volume versus the outcomes. Sometimes being busy feels successful because it feels like we are going and going and going. So we must be doing something successful. And that's why I kind of, I, I caution people sometimes with this whole grind theory where I'm on the grind, I'm on the grind. Being on the grind without a, a, a real clear goal can be dangerous because you're just frustrating your efforts because you're, you're putting all your efforts in the wrong place. It's just like the person that says, you know, I, I've read a hundred books, but if none, if none of those books had anything to do with your strengths or the gifts, strengths, and talents you've been given, then those hundred books really don't matter a whole lot. If none of those hundred books have to do with your, your character or developing yourself as a leader, it doesn't matter. Me reading a bunch of, you know, a hundred Harry Potter books won't matter as much as me reading books on how to be a better coach, how to be a better speaker, how to build better content, how to be a better husband, how to be a better father, how to be a better friend, son. Those things matter because I can then measure the outcomes. So don't, don't get caught up in volumes. Don't, don't be the person that is just very busy, but not very productive. Because that will become a very frustrating cycle when it's time to sit down and look at what have you really accomplished? What has all that volume served? So yes, you know, do what helps you achieve success, but measure success in terms of outcomes. Because in order to get there, you have to start from the beginning of this talk, which is the values. And then once you figure out what your values are, you then can can go through, you know, what is the reference point? What what are you comparing yourself to, which is your gift, strengths and talent? In order to do that, we talked about it. You got to discover what are those things. And then from there, you can measure what's hard to measure. And once you've measured what's hard to measure, you have a more a, a larger outlook and then you're ready to measure success from a, a short term and long term perspective. And then you get the outcomes. All right. So I hope this was helpful. Don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, review this, this podcast. It's always so helpful. I love you all, and I will see you all next week, same time, same place, reminding you that success is your destiny.